Hey everybody, this video is called Prepare to Build, and today we continue our pass-through study here in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 22, so there is no topical Saturday, but we are going to be looking today at David starting the preparation for the work of the temple through Solomon, and uh, we officially hit three quarters of the way through our study here, we just got a couple more weeks to go, and uh, one thing to mention before we start the reading of the text this is the final section that's going to focus on David's preparations for Solomon to build this temple. In today's reading, it's going to give us a general preparation and various charges that will be discussed. And we'll be seeing David today giving us three charges to the workmen and Solomon and the leaders. So chapter 22, we're going to start in verse 2 through 4 because... We left off last night in verse 1. It says, So David commanded to gather the aliens who were in the land of Israel, and he appointed masons to cut hewn stones to build the house of God. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails of the doors of the gates and for the joints and the bronze in abundance beyond measure and cedar trees in abundance for the Sidonians and for those from Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. So, aliens, they were the non Israelite artisans who made up the descendants of the Canaanites as well, as we're going to learn later on in our next study, Lord willing, 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 7 through 10, and the war captives in 2 Chronicles 2 7, for whom the Mosaic legislation provided compassion and protection as seen back in Exodus 22:21, Exodus 23 verse 9, Leviticus 19:33, and Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 14 through 15, and from whom service was exacted. And only here were the laborers called aliens as seen in 1 Kings chapter 5 verse 13 through 18. And David would be acquired the iron technology from the Philistines, as we see back in 1 Samuel 13, verse 19 through 21. And the bronze would have came from the spoils of war, as we saw a couple weeks back in chapter 18, verse 8. And cedar came from Lebanon. It was a very, very heavily wooded and mountainous country north of Israel, and it provided by the residents of Sidon, Sidon and Tyre, and most likely under the leadership of David's uh, friend that was a king, Haram. In uh, 1 Kings 5, uh, verse 15 through 18, it further describes how the aliens were actually put to work in the building of the temple, the temple of Solomon's day. And there were 10,000 slaves and we see the the cedar trees were excellent timber. They were the best materials at this time period to build the temple. And to continue here, verse 5, it says, Now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. So we see that Solomon was born early in David's reign, somewhere right around 1990 BC. And, and at this time, it was 20 to 30 years of age for David. And the magnificent and complex challenge of building such a momentual building with all its elements required an experienced leader for preparation. And David understood that the temple needed to reflect on earth something of God's heavenly majesty. So we see that he devoted himself to the collection of the plans and the materials and the tapping of the vast amount of spoils from people that he had conquered in the cities that he had sacked as we're going to see in coming up in verses 14 through 16. And even after David's death, Solomon knew 
that he was young and inexperienced as we saw back early January 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 7. And when he was offered the choice back in 1 Kings 3 of anything, he asked for God's wisdom to lead God's people. And I can imagine old David and young Solomon pouring over these plans and ideas together with excitement. And you probably never built your own house. I've never built my own house. Uh, it would be really cool to have a house built, you know, according to the plans that I come up with or that we want custom made. But, you know, when, when we see, you know, these two, David and Solomon, preparing to build a temple, it's got to be an exciting moment to, you know, to do something, a service to the Lord. And David, he passed his vision on to his son, Solomon in verse 6 through 10 says then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel and David said to Solomon my son as for me it is in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God but the word of the Lord came to me saying you have shed much blood and have made great wars you should not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies around. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall build he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of the his kingdom over Israel forever. So through verse sixteen coming up. David gives careful instruction for Solomon for the building, which David could not do because he was a man of many battles. And David reflects on the covenant that God made with him back in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and what we looked at back a few weeks ago, back in chapter 17, and which included the divine mandate that Solomon build this temple. And uh, the overtones of the Messianic reign is what we covered in chapter 17 in 2 Samuel 7. And one of the reasons why God did not want David to build this temple was because God wanted a man that was a man of rest and peace to build a house for him, which David obviously did not qualify in verse 11 through 13 says, Now my son, may the Lord be with you, and may you prosper and build the house of the Lord your God, as he has said to you. Only may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding and give you charge concerning Israel, that you may be kept the law, keep the law of the Lord your God. Then you will prosper if you take care to fulfill the statutes and judgments with which the Lord charged Moses Concerning Israel, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. So we see that David makes a spiritual charge to Solomon, and it resembles the Lord's exhortation to Joshua back in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. And Solomon asked God for and received the very wisdom and understanding his father David desired for him, as we saw back in 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 3 through 14 and we'll also see when we kick off right after father's day lord willing in second chronicles chapter 1 and he learned the value of such spiritual counsel and he passed it on in his book of ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 in chapter 12 verse 13 and the chronicler here he's emphasized david's legacy and solomon's mission to build the temple and this was by far Solomon's greatest accomplishment and David knew that Solomon had to be in obedient fellowship with God or else Solomon could not be strong and courageous and Solomon could take courage and reject fear because God had promised David as long as his sons would walk in obedience that they would keep the throne of Israel as we saw back early January in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. And it didn't matter what man would do through 
the different nations surrounding them, like the Assyrians and the Egyptians and the Babylonians. As long as David's sons were obedient, the Lord was going to be with them. And, you know, as long as they followed God with all their heart, God would establish their kingdom. And so David's sons, they were called to obey and God would take care of the rest. And verse uh, 14 through 16, it says, Indeed, I have taken much trouble to prepare for the house of the Lord 100,000 talents of the Lord. Uh, or, or sorry, 100,000 talents of gold and 1 million talents of silver and bronze and iron beyond measure. For it is so abundant, I have prepared timber and stone also. And you may add to them. Moreover, they are workmen with you in abundance, woodsmen and stone cutters, and all types of skillful men for every kind of work. Of gold and silver, bronze and iron, there is no limit. Arise and begin working, and the Lord be with you. So, if a talent weighed approximately 75 pounds, this would be approximately 7,550 tons, a very a staggering amount of gold. And that was 100,000 gold. And 1 million would be approximately 37,500 tons of silver. So we see that David took seriously his mission to prepare the way by bringing security and treasure to Israel and his successor, Solomon. And David did all the preparation and Solomon was to do the work with the confidence that the Lord was with him. And David is an example of someone who works in the background of ministry. They receive little to no recognition or credit for their work, but the job cannot be done without their service. And David gathered and prepared the materials for the temple and he established the plans of the temple he organized and commanded the administration of the temple in verse 17 through 19 it says david also commanded all the leaders of israel to help solomon his son saying is not the lord your god with you and he has he has he not given you rest on every side for he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house that is built for the name of the Lord. So that's actually the last few verses here of chapter 22. And knowing that Solomon was young and inexperienced and that he could not take on alone a large project, Dave, uh, David wisely enlisted the loyalty and the help of his leaders to transfer the allegiance to Solomon, who would carry the divine will and the last wishes of his father. And the Lord undertook to make Solomon the wisest man on earth back in first kings chapter 3 verse 3 through 14 in verse 19 it shows that they must seek the lord in the midst of their work so to wrap up here we see the chronicler in today's chapter he gives charge to solomon gathering men and materials for the building of the temple and the chronicler he shows the the vision of David for the preparation of the temple and he shows the exhortation of David to his son Solomon in the call to build this temple and we saw that David warned his son Solomon to stay faithful to God and his word and just because there was a job to do he was not supposed to pull, uh, pull his attention away from God and we see that David did prepare for the building of the temple and our temple is Jesus, and Jesus has built the eternal temple. We must remember, even when we go through the Old Testament and these descriptions might be over your head or you might not have as much interest in them, 
When we think of temple, for us in the new covenant, we can think of Jesus because he is our temple. And I want to read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. And it says here, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So Jesus also built his own temple. And Jesus, as we know from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, I know it's a very popular Christmas verse that you might hear every year. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And Jesus, he even plundered the enemy himself at the cross. And Jesus took much trouble in preparing for the house of the Lord, a.k.a the church. And he prepared the temples, built in materials. Jesus prepared his people, and Jesus prepared the elect. And the chronicler today ends the chapter looking at David's commands to the leaders of Israel. And we'll see you next this upcoming week as we continue looking at the new duties of the Levites. So I hope that you join again this upcoming week. And, uh, I hope that you have a great rest of your weekend. God bless.